Hi, welcome everyone and happy Friday. It's my favorite day of the week where I get to do my photography masterclass. And more importantly, for the people watching on my channel, I get to do a quick tip before we kick off the main stream at the top of the hour. So for those of you who are following this, this series, this is my, um, I don't know, I forgot the count of the episode, but this is the episode on special effects for photographers and basically just doing the stuff in Lightroom and Photoshop to make your photos stand out and basically give you some more options than beyond what you had. Now this first one is just a simple one for those of you who shoot with iPhones or shoot with phones that have portrait mode that create that kind of shallow depth of field effect. So I'm gonna switch over to my, uh, my desktop. And on my desktop, I've got this image. I've shown this before, but just for those of you who are new, um, and just to give this bonus tip, for those of you who, are, who shoot in portrait mode, you know that you know you focus on something and the rest of the image can be out of, out of focus. And if you save that image out or send it to your computer as, an, as a high efficiency HEIC file, um, that will contain a depth map that Photoshop can use. So I've got this image open in Photoshop. I'm just gonna go up to my uh, filter menu. I'm going to come down to Blur, and we're going to go to Lens Blur. Lens Blur has been there for a while, but it's been enhanced. And when I go to Lens Blur, this actually gives me the option to choose the depth map that's inside the file. So again, your regular images don't have this, but the images you shot in portrait mode and saved out as HEIC do have this. So you can go in and choose that depth map. Depth map. Now, once you choose it, uh, what can you do with it? So, for example, let me hang on, let me ref refresh a different screen here. There we go. Uh, once you choose it, then you can also set your focal point. So you can choose your blur distance, and you can actually click and click where you want the focal point to be. So I can click right on the object, and now everything got really super shallow depth of field. And I can click uh, on like a chair in the background, and everything in the foreground got super shallow depth of field. I can click right here on the front of the table and it kind of fades back right here, right here. So I can set my focal point anywhere I want after the fact. And that's your bonus tip of the day. Using um, the iPhone's portrait mode to change the focal point in your portrait images as you take them. All right, we'll be back in less than a minute. I'm going to put you guys in the lobby. Thanks for joining me on my channels. I'm going to put you guys in the lobby for less than 60 seconds, and then we'll kick off the mainstream right at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Thanks for joining me. And again, uh, we're gonna be doing lots of special effects today, so stay tuned. And welcome everyone, happy Friday. Welcome to our masterclass series. This is Friday here at Adobe Live, and it's my pleasure to be doing, um, once again, my photography masterclass. And as many of you know that, um, for those of you who follow these series, we, you know we do masterclass Fridays, pretty much every Friday, except for when it's a company day off. But uh, this means that you have a full day of content, starting off usually with Paul Tranny doing, uh, I believe he does his, um, his photographer or his Photoshop masterclass first, but this morning he had some technical difficulties, so he didn't get a chance to do it before me, but he should be back after the uh, Daily Creative Challenge and doing his design masterclass. And then uh, after that will be... Uh, I believe it next up on the list would be Jason Levine doing audio and video. After Jason is Howard Pinsky doing uh, UI UX design in Adobe XD. And then after that will be Kyle Webster doing digital painting and drawing in Fresco and Photoshop. 
So lots of content uh, with lots of different apps and lots, lots of different presenters all day, every Friday. You can always watch the replays. And uh, for those of you who are joining me live, thanks. I see a bunch of people already in the chat. I see Wade. I see uh, Nicholas. I see Andres. I see Alina, uh, Megan, uh, Anika, welcome. <clears throat> Sean, Victoria, glad to see you all here. And um, for those of you who are watching on my other channels, like you might be watching on Twitter, which I'm happy to be back on Twitter streaming. I see that it is live. Um, and I'm on you, my own YouTube and I'm on uh, Facebook. So welcome for those of you watching on, on all those different channels. And you can hang out and watch there all you want. But if you do want to participate in the chat, you should head to b.net slash Adobe Live. So that's where the chat is that I'll be paying attention to for questions and, and, and just things that people want to say. Because I can't look at all the different channels at the same time and still get content done. <laughs> so I can't get a lot of content if I'm busy chatting. So with that said, that's where we're going to be spending uh, the time looking at the chat. I'm looking at it right now. Cool way to start the weekend. Uh, thanks, Rex. And... Um, all right, and everyone's just saying hi. So cool, that's where you want to go. Uh, B.net slash Adobe Live if you want to participate in the chat. Otherwise, you can just hang out and watch. Um, and again, people always ask, hey, I can't stay or I can't see this all at once. Can I watch this later? Yes, you can watch it later on all the various channels you're watching it on now. So the replays will be there uh, on Adobe Live, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook. You can watch it wherever you happen to be seeing it at this at this time. So with that said, I'm gonna um, get real started real quick. So we're gonna do photography special effects. And what that means is we're gonna do effects that uh, take your photos beyond just what came out of the camera. Now, there's some, some effects you can do right in Lightroom. And of course, you can do just about anything in Photoshop. So we're gonna spend a, probably the bulk of the time in Photoshop, but I don't wanna leave out some things you could do in Lightroom to kind of give your images that extra oomph to them um, before you even, you know, maybe all it needs a little something, a little special effect. And we're going to do those first. And then we'll head over to Photoshop to do a lot more things that we could normally not do unless we were in Photoshop. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and switch over to my desktop. I've got um, Lightroom Classic open right now, and for for the most part, everything I'm going to show here would also work in Lightroom um, LR or Lightroom Cloud or Lightroom Mobile, as some like to call it. So, if you whether you're doing this on your mobile device, whether you're doing this on an iPad, whether you're doing this on the desktop, pretty much everything I'm going to show you here, you'd be able to do in any of those environments. All right. So first and foremost, um, one of the I don't know that I call it a special effect, but it's certainly special <laughs> that it it lets me do things, uh, especially I use it all the time in photos where I need to add some light. I need some lighting effects in my photo. Now, in this particular image, this was a natural light shoot uh, up in Michigan back in 2009. And this uh, kind of uh, I don't want to say it's abandoned, but it's a church. That's, uh, you know, old school wooden log cabin type church. You can kind of see the light coming in from a window way up top. And that's all the light there is. I didn't think there was even, even any electricity in this building. Um, but I wanted to light this a little bit better. I didn't bring any lights. So I thought, well, what can I do after the fact? So I head over to my develop module. And in my develop module, I've got um, my, one of my favorite tools, the radio filter. And the radio filter, now, Keep in mind, I could bump up the exposure for the whole thing, but then it kind of gets like it loses its appeal that way. In other words, it loses its natural light appeal if I bump up the exposure for the whole thing. So what I want to do is just put some spotlights on different areas using the radio filter. Now, when you go into the radio filter, one of the first things I will point out, especially in Lightroom, is that you have built in presets. And what these presets let me to do, let me do is notice it says effect. I'm going to change the effect to exposure. And what this does simply is it zeroes out everything else. So everything else that might have had an adjustment or a number on it changes those all back down to zero. And it changes your exposure a little bit. Like so it's like it may not be where you want it to be, but the main reason for the preset is not so much to set what the exposure number is going to be. Oh, it didn't even change it at all. Okay, normally it would bump the exposure a little bit. 
but more importantly, it would zero out everything else. And that's what I really use it for. So I bump up the exposure a little bit more. And now I'm just going to go ahead and just draw uh, an ellipse. And like I said, it's just a slight amount, amount of exposure. So it's really not that much. And if I bump it up some more, you can start to see it's lighting that one spot. Well, here's the thing. I took this and I moved it around, which is kind of cool that we're doing this in 2021. I can remember back in the day, if you were doing something like this in, in any application, you have to wait for it to render every time you moved it. So the fact that I can do this live and there is even some, some scripture on the wall there. So if I zoom in on that, um, here, I'll zoom in. Oh, I can't zoom in while I'm in this. Hang on, let's get out of this first. Let's go in and let's zoom in. You can see that there's even writing on the wall. So we can expose that writing. But here's the best part. When you're in the radio filter, you don't have to just live with one. Like we got that one, we can pick it up, we can move it around, we can do whatever we want, change the settings to it. And we can also add another one. So if you wanted another light somewhere else, you can just simply hit the um, new and that will give me a new one. Now, if I draw out another one, that's a second one. And that second one can have its own setting. So it has nothing to do with the first one. You're not changing the first one. And you can move this one around. You can reshape it. You can put it wherever you want. And that one can be your next light for the area that you want it to light up or expose next. So what this lets you do, and now in this case, I just kind of like use it to light different areas of the church. But what you could do with it, especially even on a landscape, is like create like in a valley, you can picture this beautiful valley where you just need some dappled light here and there. You can just add those lights after the fact right here in Lightroom non-destructively. Now, I want to show you a bonus tip for this. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump out of this photo and I'm going to go to this photo. Now, this is a portrait and it's already lit. It doesn't need any extra light. Like it doesn't need anything else. But here's, here's something I learned from doing that, um, that trick where I, I took a dark photo and added light. Well, if I got a light photo that's already lit, I don't need to add any light to it, but I want, may want to do the opposite. I may want to darken everything else. So if I go to my develop module again, or Lightroom edit, and I grab the uh, selective adjustment, the radio filter, and I pull it out again, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to do exactly what I said. It's going to lighten her up, but I don't want, she doesn't need to be any lighter. So what I would do instead <clears throat> is click down here. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Down here, you have a, a checkbox for invert. So if you invert that effect, then what you're doing is you can go the opposite way. You can darken everything else. And that way you can kind of create this again spotlight effect where you're lighting something that's in this case already lit but you want to create a spotlight effect by darkening everything else now the next thing that i ran into is well, what if you need to light two spots like you need to light maybe she's wearing a, a watch or jewelry or something you want to uh, illuminate that as well so if i do the same trick where i go in and i create a new one and I go in and do it again, uh, well, then I have to also keep in mind that if I darken this one or lighten this one in this, in this way, in this case, I can lighten it, but just keep in mind, each one can be inverted. So m be mindful of what you're doing because this one's actually doing the opposite where there's already one here that's set to invert that's darkening everything else. This one is set to invert, but it's lightening everything else. If I choose darken, it's going to darken the circle. If I choose invert, it's going to invert the whole photo. So just be mindful that each one you add is going to have its own characteristics for what you might want to do with it. Okay, so with that said, uh, that is using um, the radio filter to add special effects with light inside of Lightroom, non-destructively. You can always delete those move them around, come back, change them, do whatever you need to do, put them wherever you need to put them, change their, uh, their attributes after the fact. And of course, they don't just have to have exposure. You could add sharpening, you could add highlights, you could add um, color, you could add whatever you want to those spots. So they don't always just have to be light. They could be whatever you want. All right, so I'm gonna jump back out of this uh, image. 
And now this is one that I've shown before, but again, we're in the special effects um, se section, so I wanna show it again just to make sure people get it. Um, I took this image back in, I don't know, when was this image taken? 2011, when I was in Poland. And uh, it's just this kind of wet uh, monument sidewalk. And I noticed that the bricks, though, the, 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 the street wasn't wet. So I was like, oh, it'd be kind of cool if the street looked wet, too. If we could add wetness to a street, how could we do that? So if we go to the develop module and we go into the adjustment brush. And we same thing, you have uh, presets for the each one of these. So you have presets for the adjustment brush. So I'm going to set this preset to uh, clarity. And just it that's just zeros everything else out and adjust clarity just a little bit. But I'm going to adjust, oh, hang on. I'm going to adjust clarity a lot. Hang on, hold on, hold on. I zoomed by mistake. So we can put it back up. There we go. Um, I'm going to adjust clarity all the way to 100, and I'm also, while I'm here, remember I said you could do multiple things, I'm going to adjust uh, contrast all the way to 100. So that way, I'm, I'm adjusting this. When I use the adjustment brush, I'm affecting those two things and nothing else. Everything else has been zeroed out. So now when I use my adjustment brush, and you can use your mouse or you can use a stylus, uh, you can make the brush nice and big. So you can go in using your right bracket key next to your letter P. Uh, you have your bracket keys and now I can just paint over this with water. So it's like just making it look wet um, by adjusting or adding a water look to this just by 100% clarity, 100% contrast. Now this won't work on all streets. Uh, some streets I've seen, I've done this on where it doesn't really make that big of a difference. But when it's cobblestone like this, where it's like, got lots of shadows and, and highlights, that's where it really stands out. Now, what if it's not wet enough? Like, okay, that's it, that's 100% of both. I can't go 110%. What if it's not wet enough? Well, you can go in and add a new one. So we add a new adjustment brush so that now when I start painting, I'm adding the effect again. So just by clicking new, and again, keep in mind that both of those adjustments have little handles. Here's the handle for the one I just did. You can see it. And if I don't like that one, if maybe that one's too much, I can pull that one back a little. So maybe I needed 150. So I can pull the second one down or up and make an adjustment. So you can add as many, many of these as you need to do whatever it is you're trying to do. If I was trying to make it super soaked, <laughs> you know, maybe I need a third one. But uh, in this case, I don't need quite two, maybe one and a half. So the second one, I just basically pull down um, the, the contrast and the uh, clarity slider on that one. All right, next up. Um, I think that's all I'm going to do in Lightroom for now. Now we're going to head over to Photoshop. So a few things in. Uh, I'm, I love doing this on the European streets. Yeah, Europe, Europe has lots of streets like this where you could... Uh, make that wet effect look really nice, Sean. So yeah, uh, I'm envious because we don't have as many streets like that here unless they're in older areas where they're uh, preserved. All right, um, next one. And this is one I used to do back in my um, studio when I lived in Michigan. I used to do this effect all the time when I would take a full length portrait like this. So she's standing here uh, head to toe and more importantly, to toe because you gotta be able to see the feet for this next effect. Now, standing here in, in the ground, I could clean this background up a little bit more. It's still slightly dirty. But you, you see that um, her shoes are casting shadows and her, her, her body's casting a shadow against the background. I'm not worried about that. But what I usually have done when I have a full, full length portrait standing in front of me is I typically add a reflection on the floor. And I've had many people ask me, was she standing on plexiglass? Was he standing on some type of mirror? Was, like, how'd you get that reflection? And I always laugh and say, Photoshop, every single time. I've never, I, I've never had someone stand on glass. I've used glass before for different, like leaning on and laying on and things like that, but never standing. Uh, so any of, any of my past portraits you've seen, it's always been Photoshop to add the reflection. All right, so let's uh, jump out of this. Let's see how we would do it. And I was also playing around with this last night and I, I thought, Wow, it's even easier now 
was before because before uh, I'll show you why it's easier. Let's let's jump in. So I'm going to hit edit in Photoshop. We'll edit a copy. Um, I think that's on my server, so that might take a second. Nope, oh, it popped right open. There it is. And uh, why this is easier now? Because before, back in 2000, whatever this was, I would have duplicated the layer, flipped it, and, and started masking out to make the reflection. But now that we've got select subject, this gets a whole lot easier and a whole lot faster. So here's what I mean. So I can, instead of me duplicating the whole layer and flipping it upside down, I only need her. I don't need the background. It's our, the background's not going to change. So I go to my select menu, come down to select subject. Photoshop figures out she's the subject and selects her. Great. Now my, my work here is done. So now I duplicate just that selection onto a new layer. Uh, Command J. And barely an inconvenience, but an inconvenience nonetheless. All right, now let's, let's go ahead and flip this, uh, or Command T. Now, that basically just put her on her own layer. So we turned that one off. You see she's on her own layer. Did a great job. Command T. And then uh, right click and flip vertical. So that will just turn her completely upside down. It looks weird because before it would be the whole background and she'd just be covered. But now you see both of her. Now I'm going to uh, go ahead and hold down the start dragging and hold down the shift key. That will drag it perfectly straight. It won't let me drag it left or right. It will let me drag it perfectly straight down. Now, when we get down to the bottom, uh, here's, the, here's the thing, and this is the thing that used to bug me. Because if I would pull it all the way down to the bottom, to where like the bottom of her, the front of her shoes are touching the bottom of the front of her shoes, then the heel wouldn't be touching. And I've done it both ways. I've done it where I uh, leave it that way and then just leave it. Or I've uh, warped it so that the heel touches the other heel. Or I've done this. I've just basically moved it up a little bit. And so I know that the feet are overlapping and that's okay because we're going to create a reflection anyway. So now that, because uh, for me, it's, I guess it was more important that the, the subject... All of it, all of the feet are touching each other. So the heel is touching the heel. The front's touching the front. There's no gaps, in other words. Now that I've got that, I'm going to hit enter or um, click away, and that will add that in. And we're going to zoom into it so we can see it. And you can see, like, one foot is covering the other one, especially on this foot. And the other one, they're, they're covering each other. Like, you don't even see her toes on the other one because it's completely covered. All right, so now this is where we get into the, uh, the mask. So I'm going to go ahead and add a mask. And now that we've added that mask, we can do anything we want with it. We can uh, go to our paintbrush, grab the black paintbrush, and we can just start painting out the other shoe so that we do create that reflection. We can do the same thing here where the, where the side of the shoe is overlapping and just, just paint it out just barely so we can see it. If, if you paint it too much, you could always switch to white and paint it back in. And that might have been too much. Let me undo that last one. I think that was about right, right about there. Okay, so now that I've got that, that's too, it's too opaque. It's too much of a reflection. It's like, it's, it doesn't look real. So we need to fade it and we need to fade it down. So we need to change the opacity. But before we change the opacity, if you're, if it's a true reflection on, uh, on a floor, it wouldn't be 100% all the way down it would start to fade away. So we're going to create that effect using the mask. So we're going to go to the gradient tool, get the letter G. In the gradient tool, now the gradient's been organized in folders now. So we're going to go to the basics folder and we're just going to choose the second icon, which is foreground to transparent. So whatever the foreground color is to transparent, that's what we want. So when I click that, that'll give me foreground color, which is black. And it doesn't matter what the background color is because it's going to go from black to transparent. Great. Now that I know it's black to transparent, which way would it fade? Well, technically, you'd probably see more of the shoe where the shoes touch, and then it would start to fade away. So if that's the case, you got to think the opposite way. You want black to mask from the bottom up. You want it to gradually go away because that's the way it would really look. It, so you gotta kind of think, 
you're masking so you're doing the opposite of the way you really want it to look. So now that I've done that, uh, now that I've chosen that, I'm just gonna drag from the bottom of the image up. And that's too much. <laughs> so let's, let's do it there. Wait, whoa, whoa, oh, hang on, hold on, hold on, hold on, something's wrong here. Why is my gradient solid like that? Hold on. I'm getting way, I'm just like, oh, I'm on the wrong gradient, that's why. Hang on, still on the wrong one. Go back to my gradient. That's the gradient I want. Cancel out of that. But it's not giving me a gradient gradient. It's giving me a solid black. Like that's a gradient. Hold on, something's wrong here. Yeah, because if I choose this one, then it works. So I could do I could do black to white as well, but if something was wrong with my gradient preset for black to transparent because it wasn't a gradient, it was just solid black. But that's the effect I was trying to get. So in other words, we're changing it so that it basically starts to fade out from the bottom. Now again, it's still too opaque even at the top or bottom of the shoe on the reflection. So now we can just go grab the same layer and just lower the opacity of the whole thing. And that way you also see if you need to do any more masking or if you've made any more mistakes there, you can go ahead and mask it out. All right. Um, no, the, the mask shouldn't have affected that gradient. Like the gradient would override the mask. So I'm not sure what happened there, but that's how I've been creating those reflections for years and years and years uh, on the ground using, um, using that same technique. So flip the image over, drag it down, add a mask, um, paint the mask if you need to, then use the gradient to fade the mask out, and then use your opacity slider to adjust to taste. So if you think it should be a less, a less, a less visible reflection, then just lower the opacity of it. But the main thing is you want that you want it to fade from solid to nothing as it goes away from the subject, because that's the way a true reflection would work. Unless you're standing on a mirror, if you stand on a mirror, then you would have a full reflection. Uh, all the way down. Okay, so we save that one and let it finish saving. Saving, saving. Okay, it's saved. We close it. It'll save the layer, put it next to it, next to the original, and you still have um, Lightroom to make any adjustments. Like, for example, I can see the white balance is off on this a little bit. Let's fix the white balance and let's just warm it up just a hair. There we go. All right, next up, um, let's get into, let me grab my note, make sure I'm not missing anything. Da, da, da. Oh, I was gonna miss something. I was about to leave, I left Lightroom and I forgot one thing. So hold on, let's go back to Lightroom for a minute and let's do one more thing. Oh, not that one. Good thing I looked over my note. All right, remember we did this one with the light, we like added the radio filter, so on and so on. I'm just gonna reset it, put it back to the way it was. Um, one of the things that went away or got replaced was, um, uh, could you create, well, hang on, there's a question from John. Could you create a shadow with a similar approach? Absolutely, John, you could. Uh, what I would do for the shadow, select the subject, duplicate the layer, but I'd fill the layer in with black. In other words, I would fill it, make it a silhouette. Then add Gaussian blur, flip it upside down, drag it down, mask it, so forth and so on. So same thing with the shadow. Um, lots of different ways to do shadows, but that would be a quick, easy way if you just needed a, a replica of the subject upside down as a shadow. All right. Um, uh, one of the things that got replaced recently with color grading was split toning. So let me show you how this would work now. Uh, so there's a split toning effect that's kind of cool you can do right in Lightroom or Camera Raw. Where if we go into um, if we go into color grading, as it used to be split toning, if we go into color grading, you have your your mid your shadows, mid tones, and highlights. And the way these work is you could add color to any one of those areas of the photo. And with split toning, it was typically your shadows and your highlights. And where people would get messed up is they would try and do both. Like they would try and add some color to the shadows, and they would try and add some color to the to the highlights, 
or the uh, yeah the highlights, and it usually wouldn't look very good unless you knew that, that was what you were trying to do. Like you were trying to make two different colors of the image to make it look right. But if you do it to just the shadows, you can create some really interesting effects on your portraits to kind of give them that more modern, jazzy color kind of look. So um, I recommend doing it primarily to the shadows. It just seems to work better. You can try it on just the highlights. I don't recommend it on the midtones, <laughs> but you can try it any way you want. And you notice you have a color wheel. So you could just really just click into whatever color you want and, and make that part of your subject. So for example, if I wanted to have my subject have kind of like a purple or reddish dual tone, then I can just drag that down. And then there's a slider below it that adjusts the brightness of that area. So right now that's the shadow. So I could darken the shadows or lighten the shadows with that effect as well. So just keep in mind that if you want to add or add a little drop of color into your image non-destructively, this is an easy way to do it without changing the image, without changing the pixels, without doing anything else. Now you also have blending. So you can control how much of that color is being used. So right now, if I turn the blending all the way to the left, it's just a slight amount. If I turn the blending more to the right, it's probably too much because it's making her look purplish red. But just adding that little extra tint is helpful. And you also have balance as well. So balancing between the wheels um, for shadows, midtones, and highlights. So you can really make it just a really finite uh, or fine adjustment for what you're trying to do in terms of a split toning effect uh, for your color. All right. Or dual tone effect, I should say. All right, just making sure I got everything there that I wanted to do. Yes, I did. Okay, we did the reflection on the floor. All right, now let's go in, get out of this image. And over the weekend, I did some uh, automotive photography. So I have this image here, and this is kind of my finished image so far. Um, and and it's just, it's sitting there on a rooftop, and it's, it's that's cool. <laughs> but... A lot of times in automotive photography, you, you see the car either moving or you see the wheels looking like they're moving. And that's very easy to do now in Photoshop. So let's take this image over to Photoshop. Let's edit a copy of it. And let's zoom it up. There we go. And now let's go in and add. Um, we're going to go. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let's, let's duplicate the layer. I was just going to think of the various ways I could do this. Let's duplicate the layer first. All right, go to your filter menu, go to blur gallery. So there's blur, which has all of traditional blur filters that have been in Photoshop for years and years and years. And then there's the blur gallery, which are, is a new set of blur filters um, that are more modern, more designed, more faster, so forth and so on. So better UI, yada, 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 yada. All right, so if I go to Blur Gallery and I choose Spin Blur, as the name implies, that will yield a spinning blur on my subject, which I can position where I need it. You can kind of guess where it's going to go. All right, there on the wheel. I can size it the way I need it. And there we go. Let's size down. And, and you, you might be tempted to just do the wheel cover or the rim or the, the, the wheel itself. But keep in mind, the tire would be spinning too. So you don't want this wheel spinning and then still be able to read Michelin because you wouldn't be able to if the, if the whole wheel were spinning. So you want to cover the whole tire, not just uh, the middle part. Now, you also have these, these dots in the middle that control the amount of feather from the outer edge that you selected in how much blur is going to be between that. Um, and typically, in this case, I'd probably want the blur to go all the way out. The other thing that's cool is although you have sliders over here for amount and for all of these different things, you also have a on-screen control. This little dial right here, you can drag and really control how fast your car is moving. And typically in automotive photography, like it's not, it's not going that fast. It usually will be going anywhere from here on down. So I would probably choose something something like I don't know, something like that just a slight amount of blur all right now let me zoom out and that amount that i put in 
ta 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 That amount that I put in, let's see, let me see it. Yeah, it's 17. Okay, I was looking for the number, it's 17. That's what I used. Because whatever I used on one wheel, I kind of probably want to use the same thing on the next wheel. So how do I get it on the front tire? We, we wouldn't, unless the back tire was just spinning and smoking, we would probably want the front tire to be moving as well. And how would I do that? Well, you notice that as soon as I move away from the one I was adjusting, I get this little pin icon as my cursor that with a plus sign, that means add another one. So I can click, come over here and click and add another one. And um, that one is also whatever it is. I'm going to make it 17 just to be exact. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull that one down as well. So pull the size down. And because that wheel is kind of turned to the right as it should be in automotive photography, it should be turned one way or the other. I can kind of lean this over and put this where I need it to be. Oh, hang on, I adjusted the, the amount of blur. Let's do, go back to 17, all right. And I may look at that one and say, yeah, that's the same, but it still looks like it could be a little more. So I may bump it up a little bit more. All right, and that's how we would make tires on a car look like they're actually moving um, on a stationary car. And you could do all kinds of other, like you could blur the background, you could use like a motion blur in the background to kind of make it look like you caught it in mid, um, mid movement. You could do that as well. So, um, yeah, let me try that. Let me go to, back to the blur gallery. Now I'm going kind of off script. I have not experimented with this one on this image, but let's try it. And in that case, I wouldn't be using, um, I wouldn't be using spin blur, I'd be using path blur. So with path blur, you get this path that you can pick up, oh, <laughs> that you can pick up. Let's see, this is why I don't go off script. I'm gonna move it over there. I should be able to pick it up, but I am gonna do it the hard way. <laughs> All right, and that will give me my blur, but I don't want it on the whole car. So what I could do is add another one Hang on, oops, undo, 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 get out of it, undo. Sorry guys, I undo too many times, go back, filter, blur gallery, path blur. And I don't know why I can't pick this whole thing up. So I'm just gonna select it all. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm still not selecting all, okay. Not sure why I'm not able to just move this. I don't want to add points. All right, we'll do it the old, old way. All right, now that I got it where I want it, I'm going to add another one over here. And on this one, I'm going to set the, um, I'm going to set it down to zero. So you can control different parts of the image by just putting more paths, more blur. So I can control this one separate from the other one. Extend this one out a little bit. Add a little bit more speed to that one. And on this one, I'm gonna set it to, set it down. There we go. So that's keeping the back of the car uh, out of focus or, oh, that's too much. Back of the car is more out of focus than the front of the car is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so you can control it with different points and you can put those different points also like you can expand them out so they cover more area of the image. So you can move these and put these in any direction you want. Still too much for the whole thing. Hold on. If 
by the way, your spin blur is still there too to adjust. So when you go into the blur gallery, you're <laughs> sorry, didn't mean to add a spin blur. You're able to add a uh, multiple types of blur. So you just twirl down the one you want. In this case, I add it. All right, I'm just making a mess of this. I'm gonna move out. <laughs> All right, but anyway, play around with the spin blur. Play around with the path blur. Um, you can again create some really interesting effects, especially on something you're trying to make move. All right, let's move on. I feel like I was getting gum stuck on my shoe. I just kept clicking and stuff was sticking. So um, I don't need to save that one. Let's move on. All right, we're going to get to our final image that we're going to spend the rest of our time on. And this is actually um, part of that weekend automotive shoot where I was doing a little cosplay as well. So this was the setup. So those of you who can see it. Uh, basically, it was uh, a couple of lights, my camera shooting at night on the rooftop, and we had our star, Victoria, as Batwoman um, starring in the shot. And this was the final shot that I liked. So that's kind of the out-of-the-camera look for the shoot. Um, but I wanted to add some more to it. I mean, I, that I'm happy with that shot, don't get me wrong, but it could have a lot more to it if we just play around. So um, this was what, um, this was the first pass at it. This was like adding some effects to it, adding the smoke. And, and my buddy, um, uh, Matt Hayward uh, was like, so did you like, did you have smoke canisters? Did you like, what kind of smoke did you, <laughs> I was like, I just laughed, <laughs> Photoshop. Uh, yeah, cause this was, there's no real smoke there. That's, that's all Photoshop. So let's get into some, some of this. Uh, yep, that's Victoria. Let's get into how some of this was made. All right, um, let's open up this image. And dun, 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 dun. Now, it didn't ask me to open up a copy because it's already a DNG. Uh, it's, it's, so it, it's not gonna edit the original anyway. Now, I could take this different approach, you know, take a different approach to this image because I can start on any area that I want. But I, I like to start when I'm retouching or when I'm doing something like a special effect shoot with things that bother me the most because then I can concentrate on what I want to make, what I want to do to make it look better. The one thing right off the bat when I open this image that's bothering me the most is this, this light under the car. It's kind of reflecting from this light over here or a light up top. It's down underneath the car and I don't, I don't want any light underneath the car. So right off the bat, that's not an effect. That's just kind of something I need to fix. So I'm just going to grab my patch tool. I mean, you can do this, of course, a million different ways. And we can even do our, um, I'm not even going to worry about the before and after because we have, we have the original back in Lightroom. I'm just going to grab the um, patch tool and kind of grab that bright spot underneath the car and just move it over and just say, nope, I don't want that bright spot underneath the car. Um, thank you kindly. Okay, so that was what was bothering me. There's another one over here. I don't even know what this blue thing is, but let's get rid of that. That's bothering me too. Okay, so now that I kind of got rid of some of that stuff that was bugging me right off the bat, now I can concentrate on the things that I want to do. So first thing I want to do is I want um, more of a of a starry night. So the, like you can see some, I can see some specks on my screen, but you can really see like there's only like this one little blue dot up here in the sky. I don't know if that's a star or not, probably not. But there's not, like it's, it's a black sky that really doesn't have anything in it. That's typically what you get when you're downtown. So one thing I want to do is I want to duplicate, actually I don't want to duplicate the layer yet. I want to go to my uh, select menu. And we, I, I've shown this a million times already. You've got edit sky replacement, but I don't want to replace the sky with uh, another sky. I want to make a sky. Like I want to take the sky that's already there, just add some stars to it. So I'm not going to do sky replacement, but there's something you might have missed. And under the select menu, there's just simply select sky. That says, uh, I'm not going to worry about bringing up the whole replace sky interface for you. I'm just going to take the sky that I see and select it for you. And so it did that. Now, um, it didn't do it perfectly. Like there's some areas up here it missed. There's some areas like her horns or, or, or whatever those are called, her ears, her bat ears are not selected. Uh, and it kind of missed the part down here in the bottom, but it kind of got the, the bulk of it. Like it got what I needed selected. So now I'm just gonna go grab a new layer. 
And with that new layer, with that selected, I'm gonna hit the letter D to um, select black as my foreground color and fill that area in that it just gave me and selected it with black. Okay, so now that I've done that, I've got um, this black um, sky. So let's do that, that's what I got. Okay, great. All right, next up, uh, to add my stars to it, I'm gonna actually use an old technique to do this. I'm just gonna go up to my uh, filter menu, come down to noise and add noise. And um, how much noise you add is, is really up to you, but we wanna make sure it's on Gaussian blur and we wanna make sure it's on monochromatic because we don't want color noise. You don't have, if you don't have monochromatic chosen, it will give you color. So I'm gonna add about 50% 50, 50 noise there. All right, and that's, that's a lot of noise. <laughs> so next up, um, the noise doesn't look like stars, it just looks like noise. And so next up, I'm gonna use a levels command to kind of, kind of flatten it out a little bit. So let's use levels, command L, PC control L. And you can see this is where all my data is, but it, the range is all the way over here. So I'm gonna shorten that range and then I'm just going to take the, the mid-tone slider and move it over to the right to kind of give me that look I'm looking for. Let's keep going, keep going, keep going. That's the look I'm looking for. All right, now that I kind of got that look, did I not click OK? Hang on. What the heck did I just do? Did I not click OK? Yeah, let me do it again. Levels. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Click OK. OK, I'm not sure why it's doing that, but let's go ahead and change our blend mode. We're going to change our blend mode. What blend mode do I want on this? I want to use a blend mode of maybe screen, lighten, darken. Overlay, soft light. There is a disturbance in the force. Hang on one second, folks. I'm just not liking the way that turned out. Let's do, delete that layer real quick. Let's do it again. Select sky. Um, put it on its own layer, Command J. And let's go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And I'm going to go in and apply my noise, add noise. That's the noise I want. Levels. For some reason, it wasn't taking my level adjustment. Let's see. Why is it not keeping it? All right, let's do it a different way. Let's do levels as an adjustment. All right, there, we get to keep it that time. All right, so now that I've got it, it's way too much as we can see, so let's go ahead and take both, take this layer and lower the opacity of it. There we go. So we lower our opacity and just add just a few speckles of stars. That's what I was trying to get to. I'm not sure I was having a problem before. Um, probably something, some step I skipped. But I like this method better because I can, I can actually dial in <laughs> how many stars I want. I don't want a ton. Just kind of sprucing it up that way. Okay, cool. That's giving me some stars in my sky. That's giving me what I want. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and uh, I want to show you how we did the smoke. So same thing. I want, but in the in the original image, yeah, it might have been thrush. Ooh, you know what? It probably was threshold. But in the original image, um, and by the way, one more thing while we're here, because now it's going to bug me. Filter. Um, blur, Gaussian blur, and let's just blur those stars just a slight amount. Not that much even. All right, 
let's make them blurry and then let's add back in some opacity You can do contrast on there's tons of things we can do with the stars we're not going to spend all day on the stars all right anyway we got the background now in that original image what i didn't like um about the way we we did the smoke the first time is it was it was uh, it was all everywhere it was in front of her too so i'm going to use the same technique i just used to put kind of it behind her so what i'm going to do is grab my i don't want to do select subject because the car and everything else will get selected so instead, I'm going to use the um, object selection tool and we can use it as a rectangle. I think that'll be fine. And we'll just rectangle her and that'll select her as it does, good or bad. And I'll put her on her own layer. So now that she's on her own layer, whatever I do behind her on a layer will happen only behind her. So I'm going to go to my background. I'm going to add uh, a new layer. So now there's a layer sandwiched in between and we're going to call this layer smoke. And we'll call this layer hero and we'll call this layer stars so that we start to know what this what each layer is all right so now that we got our smoke layer we need to create that smoke using a brush that you may or may not have already so i'm going to go to my brushes hit the letter b to get to my brushes and in my brushes panel i'm just going to go ahead and click to bring up the uh, brushes panel and i'm going to go to brushes and I'm going to scroll down and I probably, I may or may not have it. So we're going to say, we're going to pretend you don't have it. Let's go to um, the brush flyout menu, get more brushes. So I like that. It's built right in, get more brushes right into the brushes panel. I'm going to show you where to get these brushes you need. All right. That'll bring up a web page. And these are Kyle Webster brushes that are available for free. Um, nope, I don't want to do a survey right now. So I want to do a couple different brushes. I want to do the spatter brushes and the watercolor brushes. So download watercolor. There it downloaded. And download spatter. There it downloaded. Okay, so now when I... Uh, Click on this that I um, this, click on this brush that I just told it to go. You can do it from Photoshop or you can do it right here from the download. It's going to say what application should this go in, and I'm just going to choose Photoshop. So I'm just basically getting some extra brushes for this smoke effect. So if I go to Photoshop, there it is, and say yep, put that in Photoshop. Thank you. Same thing for this one. Yep, put that in Photoshop. Thank you. There it is, Photoshop application. And just by choosing the application, it knows what, what you're trying to put those in. So there they are. Watercolor and spatter are now there. So when I go to watercolor, what I'm looking for is a brush that kind of looks like, you know, clouds. Kind of looks like it would have that effect to it. So there's, there's this brush that I could use. Dun, 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 dun. And I'm just doing it visually. I'm not looking at the names because the names are short anyway. I'm just looking at a visual brush here. I think I'm going to go with this one. All right, so now that I got this brush, I'm going to make it, uh, I need the color. So I'm going to hold down my option or alt key, pick the red from her uh, wig there. And I'm just going to go ahead and make my brush nice and big. And when I, I'm on my layer that's for smoke, and when I click, I get nothing. <laughs> because I'm on the wrong blend mode. All right, let's go normal. There we go. When I I don't like that color. I don't like that brush. Let's make sure we're on the same one. Nope, I don't want that brush. All right, undo, undo. Wrong brush. Dun, 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 dun. There is one in here that I liked. Maybe this one. Oh, hang on. Hold on. There's another issue going on here. There's that too. Let's make our flow back up to 100. There we go. All right. 
adding that back in. Let me turn off our, our sky for a minute. That's what that's the effect I'm looking for. And let me make my brush bigger. My sky is affecting that. So hang on for a minute. Let me just turn the sky off for a second. There we go. So just doing clicks will give me that smoke effect that I'm looking for uh, off to the side there. And because she's on her own layer, I can click all around her and nothing will happen to her because she's on her own layer. All right, uh, so now that's what it would have looked like before if you would have done the paint without making her her own layer. That would have given you um, the paint over the hero. So we want the hero separated outside of the smoke area. And then we're gonna come back down and we're gonna move that smoke area above everything else. There we go. Not above her though. <laughs> and now if I turn back on my sky, my sky is behind the smoke. All right, uh, a little bit of layer stacking there. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our, um, our eraser actually. I got a little too carried away with the paint on the car. Let's get rid of some of that smoke. There we go. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna create, um, we're almost out of time. I want to create a spotlight effect, and I also want to um, show you a couple quick, tip, quick, quick tips and techniques. So let's do our spotlight first. Uh, let's go ahead and create another new layer, and this this layer will be our spotlight layer. Time flies when you're having fun. Now that we've got our spotlight layer. We're going to go to our lasso. We're going to use. Um, Hit the letter L to get to it quickly. We're gonna use our polygonal lasso. And I'm just gonna come outside the image, click, 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 and click. That will give me that selection. Then I'm just gonna fill that selection with the same red that I already have selected. And now that we've, oh, hang on, I'm not gonna fill it with the same red we have selected. I'm gonna go back to my gradient here. And I wish my gradient, I wish that gradient were working. Why is that gradient not working? Anyway. Yeah, because that's not going to give me a gradient. For some reason, that basic gradient is screwed. All right. Anyway, let's um, pretend my gradient was going to transparent. Then once you've got that, you obviously don't want just a big triangle. So we're going to do blur. We're going to do Gaussian blur. And we're going to go ahead and just blur the, blur the, blur the crap out of it. That will give us our spotlight. And if I change the blend mode on that, that will kind of get rid of... Um, change it to... Just trying to get rid of some of that white. Uh, it's not going to give me what I want in time. Okay. All right. I'll leave it on normal for now. Your, yours will be red to transparent. Next thing we're going to do is we need our bat logo. So I'm going to take that layer and move it down a bit. And let's just, you know what? I'd rather the whole thing be red. Just give me the whole thing is red. The white's driving me crazy. Gradient. I'm out of time anyway. All right, there we go. Filter, Gaussian blur, and we'll move it down. And next thing we would do is put our bat signal in. I have one in Adobe Capture that I would use, but like I said, I'm out of time. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna get a chance to show it, but we put that in the sky, tilt it, turn it, and away we'd go. The only other thing I would do with this image, which I did, is darken the bottom. So using those same techniques that we saw uh, in Lightroom, I would take this into the, light, to the camera raw filter. I would then just darken the bottom of the image as well using um, probably the adjustment brush. All right, so with that said, sorry folks, I'm out of time, but you kind of hopefully you got some special effects out of this. You got your starry sky, you got your colors, you got your smoke, you got your brushes, more, 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 but we're out of time. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.